Welcome everyone. Appreciate you joining me again for a Facebook Live on a Tuesday. So, as you know, I live in Topeka, Kansas, and I take the Wall Street Journal. And last Saturday, Topeka made the headlines. Topeka wants America's top remote talent. And the article has all kinds of reasons why people are moving to Topeka, Kansas, and buying homes, and setting up shop in these homes so that they can work remotely. People from big cities like New York and Chicago and St. Louis and San Francisco. So I just wanted to tell you that I live in a very famous place. Topeka and, and Kansas are really known for a couple of things. Um, we are, Topeka is the home of the very famous Supreme Court case, Brown versus Board of Education. And Cheryl Brown was the student that went to Monroe School that started the whole integration process in our public schools today through that famous lawsuit, or lawsuit and then Supreme Court case. And so we have a museum all about that. We also are known around here for Dorothy of Oz and the red sparkly shoes. So even if you're not moving to Topeka, Kansas to come to work remotely, next time you're passing through the state of Kansas, please stop in Topeka because we have the Brown versus Board of Education Museum. You have the sewing workshop to stop at and you can head 30 miles west and go to the Oz Museum and then you can head even further west and see the most gorgeous wheat fields because we are just about the breadbasket of the world right here with our wheat fields. So anyway, I'm touting Kansas today and Topeka. I'm pretty proud of our town right now. This is so confident time, of course. And last Friday, we launched the um, prep, let, was it last week or is it a week ago? I think it's a week ago now. I'm, I'm losing track of time. Uh, the project for October, which is the um, borough inspired jacket. So we put together this project for the month of October, which is a layering process of raw edged pieces of linen gauze over a base fabric. And we call this burrow inspired because it has some hand stitching. It's in the spirit of mending and repurposing fabrics. And we chose the London shirt to, because it's oversized and becomes a great jacket. And today we're talking about fall jackets, and so this is just exactly right for this time of year. But I have had some questions from people about other patterns to use. Not everyone loves a drop shoulder. I happen to love a drop shoulder, but not everyone does. So there are a couple of other options. Put this up here. One option is to use the Liberty shirt pattern. One of the features of the London is that it has these forward side seams on the diagonal. So the back swings around, it's a little, it appears to be a little bit longer, and it creates the sort of tails, I'll, I'll call it, at the sides. That's one of its features. Well, the Liberty has the same feature. It also has the forward diagonal side seams with the back that appears to be longer. So it's really this a very similar shape, but it does have a, um, a, a narrower shoulder. Now, the Liberty is meant to hang about an inch off of the shoulder, but you could bring that up with a narrow shoulder adjustment if you chose to. So it has a little more fit to it. You could change the collar, you could leave the collar, you could take it off and do what you want to for that. So that's another option. And a third option, is the Chicago jacket. Now this one has actually been done in the spirit of the borough inspired jacket for the monthly project. And you can see that uh, it also has the patches. This is a base fabric of kind of a crinkled linen and then some novelty silk has been put on top of it. We've had a lot of, of interest in this project from people and we've had a lot of people calling us to put together customized kits. And people, of course, are using their own fabrics as well, and so they're asking for our opinions about, oh, should I use this, should I use this, what goes together. And really, the idea of whatever works as a raw edge surface for the top, 
on a ground of a solid or a print or a texture and as long as you can stitch through by hand or machine, I do give a machine option in the, in the video, but generally by hand, you can stitch through a couple of layers and you can see some great stitches, that's your project. So I don't think you have to worry too much about the fabrication as long as the stitching and the patches kind of read as a design element. Now this is the Chicago, so whereas we have the London shirt which has drop shoulders and the Liberty shirt which is not very dropped at all but a little bit extended, this has no shoulder seam per se, a totally different insertion of a sleeve. So this is more like a raglan but the shoulder seam is all part of the assembly of the sleeve and the sleeve and the shoulder seam are sewn all in one. It's a very unique treatment for a shoulder. If you can see that sort of V insertion. So you don't have to worry about where it sits on you and you don't have this drop shoulder issue or fitting your shoulder issue. You can just make this. It looks good on everyone. So this is the season of fall jackets. For us in Kansas, we're beginning to see the change of light, the change of temperature. It can still be hot. It can also be cool. So it's time when I throw on that second piece on top of something sleeveless or short sleeve or even long sleeve. But every morning in the, for the last week or so, I've been leaving the house with a little jacket on. I say little, a jacket. I don't know why I say little. It's not a little jacket, it's a jacket. And it's something I can throw on, put on over anything that I have on, take it off during the day or not. So I have on the Chicago jacket as well. And I was commenting to Aaron before we started that this very possibly is my favorite jacket. First of all, it's in a color that I love. It goes over so many colors from my purples to blues to pumpkin colors and I can just pretty much, I consider this color really a neutral. I know it's not everybody's color, we get a lot of pushback that I only wear my colors, but you know everybody has their preferences and what they would use as their base neutral jacket color and for me this really works with a lot of different things. So I like it because it has pockets and the pockets are sewn to the face of the jacket. I like it because it doesn't have fussy facings. It has just a simple double fold hem at the center front and around the bottom. The collar is just a nice square collar. I can pull it up if I want to, if it's chilly and windy and all of that. Uh, it has one button, which is plenty. I don't generally button it, but I can. So it can be a feature button or no buttons at all or a series of buttons if you want more. There are no bust darts per se, but there are two darts right here on this jacket, kind of short darts. And that changes the shape of this jacket so there is some bust fullness. And these darts can be either deleted or expanded a little bit more if you need that. The sleeve is not too big, but it, there's enough room in here that I could wear a raglan sleeve or a a dolman sleeve or maybe something like our Maison top which has a pretty large sleeve. I can wear anything under this jacket. This is the jacket that I wear when I'm traveling. Of course I haven't traveled all that much recently but in the days of traveling this is the kind of jacket that I would wear because I'd want the pockets, I'd want something a little bit longer and something that I could get cozy with on an airplane or in the car and I don't know this Chicago jacket just kind of fits the bill for me. I'm going to talk about fabrics in a, in a minute, but I want to show you a, a series of what I consider these kinds of jackets. Those throw on, not too serious, make them in any fabric, something neutral, basic, or pop it with a color, have fun with it, but it's the kind of jacket that you grab when you're leaving that in the morning and heading out of the house and you need something on over what you already have decided to wear for the day. So Chicago jacket is one. Um, one of the things that I have, I have two other Chicago jackets to show you. And one of the ones that I wear a lot 
is my solid black one. You know, everybody needs a black jacket or a navy jacket or a brown jacket or whatever, a gray jacket, whatever that, that neutral, dark color is for you. So this is the Chicago. It's really simple. Uh, it's so simple in this particular case that I didn't even hem it. I've just used a roll hem around the edges, and it's a single layer collar. It could not have been easier to construct. So this is one of my favorites, and I realize I wear it so much that I'm missing my button, so I've got to go find a new button, but uh, I don't know what happened to my button. And, of course, I'm a big fan of black and white, but I could pop this over my kind of color, blues, reds, any color. We all know that black goes with anything. So make yourself a basic Chicago jacket. You can also lengthen it. This one has been lengthened quite a bit to more of a long coat length. All the elements are there, though. The pockets, the interesting seaming. This is a seam. This is a dart. This is a seam that has the pockets. And then there's some top stitching that defines the pocket, which I think is a nice detail. You can wear it over a turtleneck. This happens to be the Alex top. But you could wear it over a turtleneck, a funnel neck, crew neck, something with a collar. That's what I like about the neckline of the Chicago. You, there's not a neckline. I can't think of a neckline that doesn't look good under it. So you're not fighting that whole look as well. You can wear statement jewelry with it if you want to. You can wear a scarf. And, and really um, dress it up, dress it down. So any length of Chicago from regular length to super long to the floor, if you want an evening coat, you know, it can go to the floor. So Chicago is one of my favorites. So Erin's gonna come around and she has on a jacket that I think you've seen, oh, probably a year, year and a half ago that we did for Facebook Live, but we want to show it to you again because there are a lot of you who either haven't seen it or have long forgotten that we ever did it. So this is the Zen. Now we have a pattern called the Now and Zen. And it's two different styles, mostly about the collar, and this is the Zen. So I made this super oversized. Uh, as a shirt, you, maybe I would make a small or a medium. But I remember making this as an extra large because I wanted a really oversized shirt. So I moved up a couple of sizes and I lengthened it and I added a vent and I added pockets. But it does have this um, detail in the front of a hidden placket for the buttonholes. The Zen shirt normally has two collars, one shorter, one taller. And as I recall, the taller one is the inner collar, and the shorter one is the outer collar. So for this, I simplified and just did one collar. So this is in a cotton gauze, and she's paired it with some fall colors, a, a plum color and a mustard color. And I just think this looks like straight ready for fall, casual, Ready to go. This is the ET underneath, the long sleeve ET, um, and then the Mason joggers. Yes. So you can look kind of, you know, dressed up, but yep. feel like you're wearing your pajamas. <laughs> and they probably can't see, but you have on no. boots today, uh, ankle mm -hmm. boots mm -hmm. in brown suede. It's, uh, kind of uh, not dressy. I, I, what do you call these? <laughs> right. Very casual. Very casual, casual boots, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole look is yeah. fantastic, though. The color scheme is really cool. Pop a warm and a cool tone together, that seems to be uh, a trend that we are liking a lot. So that is Zen. Here is another Zen. This one I've also paired with a swing tee, and it's the swing tee that has a little bit of extended um, ready-to-wear binding that forms a, a not a turtleneck, but more of a funnel neck, I guess it would be called funnel neck, meaning it's a little bit looser than what a um, turtleneck would be. But this fabric has a uh, knit base, and then it has a woven, some patches. It's very in the spirit of the borough-style garments that we're doing for the month of October in So Confident, 
but this is all machine done. And so these are attached with a zigzag, and then there are zigzag straight stitches that fill out each square. The nice thing about this jacket is that it has a single welt pocket and a single welt pocket in the back, which of course is useless, but it's fun. This is a technique on a single welt pocket that is really unique. I've never seen it written before. I owned a ready-to-wear jacket from years ago that had this particular look of a single welt pocket. And through just fussing with it, and I don't even remember, maybe I tore it apart, I figured out how to make it. So it's really different than you find in your standard sewing books on how to do a single welt pocket. And I really like the technique a lot. So we have a tutorial, actually, on how to make this jacket from start to finish. Find a base fabric, <clears throat> select an, an overlay fabric, how to stitch it. This is using the two collars, but I've extended the inner collar to be a little bit higher than the pattern. So for instance, this is the outer collar. This inner collar would normally be only about maybe an inch or so taller than the outer collar, but I've made it even taller. So I just wanted a little more something around the neck. But this is a very comfortable, casual, throw-on jacket that you throw in the washing machine, let it crinkle up, and not get too um, upset about the fact that it might get more crinkled than you want. In fact, as I recall, I made this jacket, and then I threw it in the washing machine, which is always a scary thing, because you never know what's going to come out, and you've put all this work into it, but you know, sometimes you just have to go for it. So this is the Zen, just like Aaron had on, also extended from the pattern, lengthened, and then some pocket details added and the embellishments added, just like we're doing in So Confident this month. As part of the Now and Zen pattern, there is also the Now shirt, and it makes a great little jacket. This one, again, has been lengthened a little bit, the now pattern in the pattern is fairly short. I would say it's just a couple of inches below your waistline. So I like to lengthen it, and this has been lengthened, but it has a unique collar in that it is a large rectangle that gets hemmed on the ends, and then it is a process of sort of like a French seam in that the neck seam is enclosed in this tube. So it's a very unique collar. And it can be made bigger, smaller, not too much smaller if you're going to do the French seam thing, but uh, definitely, definitely larger. So I like this as well as a jacket. A little bit of embellishment on this, some hand stitching. You know, we're in, this is the month of hand stitching for us with the Sashiko Burrow styling. And so this particular fabric, which was a stripe, a black and brown stripe, the stripes have been uh, run horizontally on the right side and vertically on the left side. So if you don't want to match stripes, this is for you. Uh, but the uh, definition of the two colors has been accented with some hand sashiko stitching using embroidery floss. And then some circles have been filled in with some buttons. So that's a fun little jacket as well. And it's also roomy enough sleeve-wise and uh, bodice-wise to go over probably any sleeve. So that's the now and zen. So we've done Chicago and now and zen. So let's look at some other fall options. This is the detour jacket. This is a download pattern. And this one, I like this because the, this triangular shape here, which is a really unique construction actually, does come up the neck a little bit and I like that, how it hugs the neck. And again, you can wear almost any collar style, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> under this. But this is straight out of the pattern. Nothing's been lengthened or shortened. Has a pretty full sleeve through here, so you can get that over a lot of sleeves as well. Has a bit of a swing to it. And a, an inverted pleat in the back. <clears throat> So that is, that is the detour jacket. Then we 
have the mixit. The mixit is named the mixit because the three styles of patterns that are in the mixit pattern mix with anything. There's a tank, a shirt, and a top. So you can take the shirt pattern and you can make it as a shirt. This is in a cotton voil. Interesting fabric. This is straight out of the pattern. Nothing's been done to it. But if you take the same pattern and make another one, maybe in a jacket weight fabric, you know that the necklines will always work together because they're the same shape. And I love this stacked idea of the little collars. That, that, that looks really good, actually. So you, this could, I made it the same length, but it could be lengthened a lot. Something like the Chicago coat or even thigh or knee. So this, the, the length of this is, can be anything. And you'll like this pattern because it also doesn't have a drop shoulder. It's extended a little bit, but not too much. So it has a more traditional flavor to it, not as exotic, fairly standard in its construction. Here it is again, a little bit longer. But again, nothing too different about it. The sleeves were extended so they could be rolled up. And now it's worn over the mix-it top, which is also in the pattern. So in the pattern, you get three pieces. that can, And this mix-it top and this mix-it shirt can go under any of the other patterns I've talked about. It can go under the Chicago jacket, the detour jacket. Um, what else did I talk about? The now and zen. So a re really good necklines on both of these. Uh, the shirt and the top patterns to wear under other jackets. And then we're giving you a sneak peek. I told you we are knee deep in planning for So Confident Series 11, 2022. And we have listened to you and we know that a lot of you want to have a wardrobe concept. So throughout the year we're planning to build a wardrobe with coordinating color schemes and styles that work together. So we're starting off in January with a new pattern called the Sterling, and it's a jacket. And this is it. So I'm not going to get into it too much with you at this point, but just know that this is coming, and we, I consider this one of those great jackets that's going to be able to be worn with a lot of different things. So the Sterling. Sneak peek. This is not the fabric that it will be in January. This, we're, make, we're beginning to make our samples now, make sure we have the techniques perfected and the sizing down, and we're, getting, we're gearing up. So, uh, so let's talk about, uh, I want to talk about lengthening things because I've talked about how you can take any of these patterns, every single one of these patterns, the Chicago, the Now and Zen, the Mix It, the detour can all be lengthened to be any length that you want, from regular length to the floor. So, I reference Sandra Betsina's book, Power Sewing, every once in a while. And of all the books that I own, and I own a considerable number of sewing books, I have to say, you can see from the post-it notes that I'm in this book some. I've recorded some things that I really think are great. Sandra and I uh, go back a ways. She's the reason that I bought the sewing workshop 33 years ago, 35 years ago, whatever it was. The sewing workshop school existed in San Francisco, and I was a student. And Sandra Betsina was a teacher there. And I remember going out there and Sandra saying to me, you know, you ought to buy this place. I went, oh, okay. So I bought it. You know, if you know Sandra, you do what she says. Um, and so I did what she told me, and I bought the sewing workshop. And at the time, she was teaching a lot of classes based on the book of Power Sewing, and then she has another one called More Power Sewing. And she was wonderful at going into designers' uh, studios and showrooms and talking to sewers and designers and calling information from them 
unique tips and techniques. And so her books are chock full of, I think, really fantastic information. And it opened up a whole new world for me from the traditional sewing of just following what I'd learned in junior high and high school and college. I thought, oh my gosh, there are other ways to do things that either save time or they're more successful. And she was the one who really encouraged everyone to do that. So, thank you, Sandra Betsina, for this technique called walking ease. I don't know where she got the technique. I should ask her sometime, but this is, I've learned this from Sandra. So sometimes when you make a, um, a garment and you lengthen it, all of a sudden you're walking and the, the two fronts flare out. They don't hang straight. So you need to add some fabric to the center front. So you can see that this is a straight shape that is parallel to the straight of grain. So the idea is to start at the original point at the neck and then draw a diagonal line to the bottom of whatever length you are lengthening the coat or top. And how much distance down here at the bottom depends on how long the garment is. So if it's floor length, you're gonna have three inches right here. If it's a mid-length coat, two and a half inch. That would be like calf. Knee length, you add an inch and a quarter, and mid thigh, you add about three quarters. I can tell you that it makes a huge difference. It works. Now, I will say this, that Sandra in her book splits the pattern and swings this. I simply add it to the edge. I don't think there's any difference. Now, somebody may prove me wrong, but I've been doing this to my garments and it seems to work just fine. You still have to lay the piece out on the original straight of grain. So what happens is this, just, this is just uh, extra fabric, which probably prevents you from doing this in a plaid because you're gonna want a plaid to perhaps be at right angles to the center front, which is gonna be trickier on a diagonal. So just think about your fabrication a little bit, but any sort of texture or even all over motifs or solids work just fine. So hopefully that'll really help you. This is something I sometimes forget to do or I get lazy and don't do it, but it's worth the little bit of extra time that it takes to do it because it really does work. Okay, let's talk about fabrics. So I have pulled out some fabrics that I think are the perfect fabrics for that transition time of the year between summer and winter. And I don't think it matters where you live here. I know that my friends who live in a warmer climate still shift their color tones a little bit and sometimes need a jacket. And so I think this will apply for everyone. These are not wool fabrics. These are not uh, heavy fabrics. These are lightweight, but give you that extra layer of warmth fabrics. So the fabric that I have on is a mat lisse. And one of the things I meant to do before I came on camera was to look up the definition of mat lisse, and I have forgotten. But it's basically uh, a jacquard almost like double weave, where the fabric looks different on the face of the fabric and the back of the fabric, and you can choose to use either one. And I can't remember which side I chose, but I know that I chose the side where the character of the fabric and the texture of the fabric stood out just a little bit more because I wanted that, a little more dark and light. So that is right here. I don't know if we can pick up any tonal difference or not. Probably not. Well, maybe. This is a little bit darker. This is a little bit lighter, perhaps. Yeah, so you can choose because it, there's no right or wrong side to this fabric. Another colorway of the same texture is this beautiful light blue gray. Now I think this is a color that goes with everything. And then we have this in I thought we had it in one, one more color, maybe not. No, 
we don't. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then the fabric that Aaron has on, why don't you just come around here just one more time just so they can see the fabric made up. So this is this gauze that is all cotton, and it's almost like a double gauze. And we know about double gauzes because a lot of quilt fabrics come in double gauzes. But this one is nice. I mean, this is garment quality, not quilt quality. And when you wash it, it gets more textured. So you're going to see some, like, for instance, this and this and this are the same texture, but I don't think it's so easy to pick up the texture because these have not been washed. So once you wash it, you get more texture. And after you've made the jacket, you can throw it in the washing machine and wash it again and just keep, and you never press it, just steam it, get some of the major wrinkles out perhaps, but it's a wonderful fabric to sew and to wear. So we have that in this beautiful burnt, burnt red, a lovely olive green, and this Bordeaux color. And we have a little bit of this color left. And you know what? This is the color of the season. And, you know, people are putting it with warmer colors. So even though it feels, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> great with blues. So this is a color that works with a lot of things. And just because it's a sort of summer color, I'm seeing this uh, in ready to wear all over the place still for the fall. With camel, it's wonderful. In fact, with the, come around here um, again. This is a great color mm -hmm. with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Good transition too, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we have this fabric, which is all cotton, and this is a waffle weave. So the texture is the same on both sides of the fabric. I was not able to figure out if there was a right or wrong side. The texture stays in place. When you wash it, it softens a little bit, not a lot. So what you get is pretty much what it is. Super easy to sew, doesn't wiggle around, doesn't move on you. So the waffle weave gives you the texture and interest while being a really uh, easy fabric to sew. So we have that in a pale gray, sky pale blue gray. We have it in charcoal. And we have it in the mustard, like the sample. Then we have this one outlier. This is navy blue. This is a jacquard. This is the only color we have this in. But it does have a tonal characteristic to it. And it is viscose and silk, but it has the appearance of cotton. The other side has a totally reversed pattern. So whereas these circles are light and the background is dark, it's just the opposite on this other side. So again, you can choose either side. So I paired them with some solid knits that you might uh, work under whatever color you choose. This is a um, steel gray, but it has a lot of blue in it. And I happen to like this even with my color a lot. And of course, it works with the grays really well. I think it's great with the Bordeaux as well. Pulled, you know, we have to have the mustard knit. Erin's Maison joggers are in this exact fabric that she has on, and she's wearing it with this color of t-shirt. So you could put this jacket with this, these pants, or vice versa. This is just a great perfect navy. Not too dark, not too light. And of course, I'm thinking navy just is that other black. And sometimes you just think, I can't have another black thing in my closet. I can't wear another black coat. I can't wear another black jacket. So navy is a, a wonderful alternative. And it looks good with black, by the way. All right, so then we have this sort of uh, cinnamon color. 
that I think works with navy, works with the olive, works with these tones, even works with this, is sort of a lighter version with this. But you can also put this beautiful purple. I love this with this. I wish I'd had a purple t-shirt to put on this morning. And, it, and so, of course, it works with the, the mustard waffle weave as well. So we have knit, 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 and the rest are wovens. OK, do you have any questions? Um, they did want to see a close-up of some of the textures. So okay. um, I can get closer. All right, and, and I can um, take them off the wall if I need to. The navy one was one of them. Yeah. Maybe I could, you want me to take it off? Um, this way I could kind of go up and let's just, I okay. can stay here and I can get right. the navy. And then you can also see the olive gauze okay. right below it. Yeah, this is the same texture. And then let's see if I can get the waffle weave below it too while we're over here. There we go. And I guess I could pan around and do the green. Let's see. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat what you have on? Yes. I have on the Chicago jacket. I have on a t-shirt that I made, and this is some um, reverse applique and some beading. So this is just an added hand-sewn element that I added to my t-shirt. And then I have on the pencil pants, my famous pencil pants in the black and white check. Okay. I like, when I wear this length of jacket, I like to wear a trimmer pant. I tried on a couple of things this morning with fuller legs and I wasn't as happy. Is the Chicago jacket lined? The Chicago jacket is not lined in the pattern. If you were to line this jacket, you might consider adding front facings and deeper hems. Otherwise, I would consider underlining it if your fabric needs some support. What is the fiber content of the waffle weave? Cotton, but let me check and make sure. Organic cotton. Yeah. Okay. And the gauze, is that cotton gauze? I think it is. 100% um, cotton. And the mat lisse is cotton and a little bit of linen. Oh, someone, Brenda said, please bring back the black and white check for the pencil pants. Oh, if I could find <laughs> it. I would do it. I'm always on the look for the black and white and mm -hmm. just can't, I don't always, I'm not always able to find it, but you're right. I'll, <laughs> I'll keep looking. <laughs> uh, did you lengthen your Chicago jacket? No, this Chicago jacket is straight out of the package. I didn't do anything to it. No alterations whatsoever. Same length, same sleeve length, everything. What is the blue above the mustard waffle weave? I think it's the gray. This, this is charcoal gray. Mm -hmm. It may have a blue cast to it, but really it's just pretty darn charcoal. And it's the, also the waffle. This is the waffle. Yeah. Let's see. Um, did Linda match the pattern on her fabric? I don't know what it relates to. Um, if, if you're asking if I matched the strie of this, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. I consider this a texture that, yeah, that would, mm -hmm. I think I w might have lost my mind if I tried to do that. <laughs> I've already lost my mind once, I don't need to lose it again. <laughs> Um, can you repeat what the pattern is on the form, the dress form, and when it'll be available? Yeah, this is the Sterling jacket, and it'll be available in January as part of So Confident. Okay. 
Does the um, cotton gauze shrink when washed? Well, it shrinks because of the crinkle aspect, but it doesn't shrink a lot in length. It shrivels up just a little bit in width, but really it's, it's not a fabric that you have to worry too much about that. Obviously, I think you would pre-wash for sure a sample and cut a four inch or a six inch sample and then wash that and compare it. Uh, but as I recall, I didn't get much change. And what size of Chicago are you wearing? I'm wearing a small Chicago. Uh, will the sterling be able to, can you make the sterling without the placket? Can you make a sterling without the placket? Yes. Um, for the walking ease, do you, the amount that you gave, like say the three inches, do you split that amount between the right and the left fronts? No. I add it to the front pattern piece which then gets added to both pieces when you cut it. So there would be three, six inches, for example, total when you cut out your left and right pieces. Uh, do any of the jackets require shoulder pads? Um, none of the jackets require shoulder pads. People require shoulder pads, perhaps. But we don't build shoulder pads into any of our patterns. Um, where is the welt pocket tutorial? The welt pocket tutorial is in the texture play, whoops, texture play zen jacket tutorial, which will be on sale this week. So that's in this, this jacket's tutorial. That's right, we don't have that anywhere else, do we? <laughs> Um, the so. Hollywood pant has a welt pocket. Different um, technique. Yeah. The San Francisco mm -hmm. coat technique is different. Yeah, it's the only place it is. What kind of fabric is used on both mix-it jackets? This fabric is linen. The fabric started out like this, just a, a, a medium weight, 100% linen. And in a craftsy class on use, uh, co my cover stitch and serging craftsy class, I teach you how to make the, these embellishments, which are um, flat locked with ribbon through them. This one is a silk mat lisse. Okay, um, the funnel neck swing T, um, how wide is that funnel? This funnel is three and a quarter inches. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> estimate. <laughs> three, three and a half, I'm not sure. <laughs> is it tight around the neck? No, it's not. Not at all. Um, on the detour, um, do you press an inverted pleat on the back or do you leave it unpressed? I think that is up for grabs a little bit with the fabric. It, in the instructions, we do have you press it. But as you can see in this, which is a corduroy, that's a soft pleat. So I don't think it matters. But whenever you are measuring circumferences of garments relating to your hips, you want to measure with the pleat closed and make sure that the garment fits you because this should not be like this on your body. Um, so you mentioned that making a larger size in the Zen, um, do you do that with the now? I would do that with the now as well. Yeah. When you it, we have changed how we approach shoulder seam lengths. Some of our older patterns have graded shoulder lines, and I believe that the now and Zen do. So as you go larger, your shoulder seam is going to be extended. 
So you have to think about that. If you don't want that, you're going to have to use the size of the shoulder from a smaller size, perhaps, or narrow, do our narrow shoulder adjustment. Just remember that. Some, our newer patterns, we stop the length at a size large now. Okay. Um, could you make the Chicago jacket in a boiled wool? Yes, we have, we have a Chicago jacket in a boiled wool, and it is fabulous. Now, I do remember that uh, Kathy is the one who made it. And there's some engineering that has to go on with this because you have, you know, with boiled wool, you're doing overlapping seams probably. I would at least. And so parts of things get cut off, parts of things get left. So because you have darts coming into seams, you have to really think about what gets cut off and what doesn't get cut off. So I would cut it out with the seam allowances everywhere and then cut away as you go rather than trying to figure that out from the get-go. So on the Chicago jacket, it just has the one button, right? Right. So that's in the pattern. It's just this is in the pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. So if you're going to take a jacket and put less buttons on it, would you uh, would you change the front of the jacket so it didn't have an overlap? So it didn't have what now? An overlap. If I was going to add more buttons, or take buttons away. Or take buttons. No, I would still have an overlap if there are no buttons. I wouldn't want the jacket to just meet. Mm -hmm. I would want to have some ease there and overlap. I don't know that it would be wrong to take it away, but I wouldn't have thought to do that. The black Chicago that you showed, what is that fabric? This is linen, black linen. But I'm going to make a black knit one. Like a ponte knit? Ponte knit. Mm -hmm heavier cotton knit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a ponte knit one on my sewing table right now. You do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a detour? Uh, no, a Chicago. A Chicago, Sorry. okay. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny, you know, we, we as sewers are really drawn to color and I think we forget to make the white t-shirt and the black jacket. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, I'll buy those. Well, good luck. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finding the perfect black jacket that fits and all that, you know, mm -hmm. when you can just make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's the one you're going to wear the most. Um, so we were talking about the burrow jacket. Um, what design of prints would you suggest? Big or little? For the what? The burrow jacket? The burrow jacket. The... Um, what designs? I would, I would look for... Um, well, gosh, we have found things for people that are all over the board, from traditional English prints in florals to painterly linens. I don't think it matters. You're looking, because you're not ever going to see, to me, you would find something that has a mid to larger motif, so that when you put your patches over it, you are disrupting the repetition of the motif. And you're just seeing edges of color, slashes of color, and all of that. On the other hand, people have chosen some very small prints. And I haven't seen the results yet, but they'll probably be great. So I'm always proven wrong with that. But if I were to just go into the fabric store or our fabric inventory, I would probably be looking at things that have uh, slightly less rep repetition, so, such a, a small repeat. I'd be, be looking for something that has a little larger repeat. So it looked a little different all over. Um, for the burrow jacket, um, were you able to find another indigo option? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm close to having that. Um, I found the fabric yesterday. I'm waiting for the information on price and availability. And I, if all things go well, we're going to be able to introduce that again. Would it be possible to have an early video on the burrow um, on, and the, the stitching so they can start the hand stitching? I filmed the video last Friday, but it takes our editor, our videographer and editor two weeks to put it together. So unfortunately, no. Uh, that's something that will be corrected next year. We'll be putting out the video and the prep letter at the same time so that you can get right into it. But this year, this is our schedule. 
And that information will be in the video, the hand stitching. Yes, I go, there are two whole chapters, lessons in the video on the hand stitching. How to knot, how to hide the tails, how to do some stitches, how to uh, do some French knots. Um, so various, uh, and I give you lots of uh, ideas of books that you can refer to for possible stitches and ideas as well. Um, have you ever lined, or are the mix-it jackets lined? No, these particular mix-it jackets are not lined, but one of the jackets I had out this morning that I was going to bring up is a lined mix-it, and it's beautiful, but I, I put it aside uh, because we weren't really talking about that. I was talking about simple, single-layer, throw-on, cotton jackets for fall, but the mix-it can be lined beautifully. It's nice. I've done it many times. Well, not many. A few times. Uh, would the fabric used on Linda's jacket um, work for pants? Yes, uh, but uh, this fabric is not drapey, so you want to choose the right style. I wouldn't make West End pants. I might make Chesney pants, um, Madrid pants, getaway pants, but yeah. Um, someone asked how the yardage on the Chicago, um, I think it's two and a third, okay. I believe. Um, but that can be found on our website. Right. Um, uh, the funnel neck t-shirt pattern, that is the swing tee. Just kind of going through these. And that's in one of the So Confident series um, eight tutorials, how to do it. But basically, it's you take the binding piece that's usually about two and a quarter inches wide. You figure out how tall you want the funnel neck, and you just make it wider. It's that simple. Can you show the dark brown jacket again, and what pattern and fabric is it? This is the now shirt. So the now and the zen are in the same pattern. And what's the fabric? I don't know what this fabric is. Uh, Karen Turnow from Oregon made this jacket, sent it to us. I have the feeling it's some sort of a rayon poly blend. I'm not sure. So you said you were wearing a small Chicago. Mm -hmm. So are you making that in a larger size than typical? No. Okay. Um, have you made the Chicago with more than one button? I haven't, but I've seen it. Um, do you have instructions on embellishing a t-shirt, like your, like your O t-shirt with a beading? Uh, no, but this, this technique is an Alabama Channon technique, a reverse applique. And so I would check out the Alabama Channon books. There are like four of them. And this particular motif is even in one, I think. I think it's the one called Design Plus, uh, Design, has the word design, it has the word plus. It might be in that one. Is the sterling jacket pattern only for so confident? What's the answer to that, Erin? Do, have we offered the patterns outside um, of so confident? Yes, I'd say it'll be, I mean, yeah, I guess we haven't made that decision, but I would say we have yes, not it made that be. decision. Uh, in the past, they have not been so confident. Members have had exclusive patterns, but I think this year we opened it up, and we'll probably continue that. We'll make that decision mm -hmm. coming up here. Right. <coughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Um, are the inside uh, seams of your the Chicago jacket that you're wearing, Linda? Are they surged? Yes, the inside seams are. <coughs> Excuse me, three threads surged and pressed one direction. If you want to make a shirt pattern into a jacket, do you generally go up one size and up two sizes if you want to do it oversized? You know, that is a, a somewhat of a style and fabric decision. Um, 
probably one size at least. Did you do that with the mixits? You had the mixits together? Did you change sizes? No, these two are made the same size, but these, I haven't had this on as a pair, so I'm not sure how it feels. I think I would think the lighter weight fabric of the shirt. Right, this is voile, you know, this is not mm -hmm. going to take up a lot of mm -hmm. bulk. Mm -hmm. So I do think it depends on the fabrication, but I don't mm -hmm. think there would have been anything wrong with making this in one size and going up a size for the jacket. The necklines are still the same. Are the burrow stitches similar to the Alabama Channon instructions? Absolutely. Um, I'm not seeing anything else right now. Maybe we can get a close up of the stitches. Can we see the Liberty shirt again? And what fabric is that? Oh boy. <laughs> this was a fabric that we had in kits a long time ago. And it is a, a poly blend. I don't remember the content of it. But we haven't had this fabric for a long time. Um, could you insert pockets on the detour jacket? Absolutely. Um, you could do side seam pockets. Or you could do patch pockets. So what's on sale this week? All right, so all the fabrics are on sale. Patterns that are on sale, the Now Is In printed, Chicago printed, Mix It printed, Detour download, not this yet. <laughs> <laughs> and we have two tutorials on sale, the Texture Play Zen Jacket which has the welt pocket technique in it. So that's this, how to make this jacket. And we have a, uh, a detour compendium, which shows you how to make this as a long coat, a vest, underlined, lined, Hong Kong finishes, all kinds of variations, beautifully presented in a compendium for the detour. Okay. Okay. Did I did I do did I do it? Yes. All right. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks so much.